Hi, my name is Jerry. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, in the United States. A couple of weeks ago on the Cadillac Forum, I showed some pictures of where I converted a 65 left side mirror to work on the right side. Uh, in all my research, I found that it appears 65, 66 Cadillac did not offer a right mirror. If they did, I've never seen one in an accessory manual factory photos, so I gave up on the idea of finding one on eBay or wherever, probably for any price. So I bought a left mirror, knowing that I might end up with something that I'd end up throwing in the trash can. Uh, I was real pleased how it turned out uh, as far as the modifications. It's about ten things I did to make it work to my personal preference. Uh, in doing it, you might find some things you'd rather do yourself. As you're seeing here, we're looking at the left side mirror, uh, which is factory installed. A couple of problems you run into putting it on the other side is right here, this mirror only tilts in. Well, when you put it on the right side, that's a tilt out, so you can't see it. Also, right up in this area here where the mirror mounts to the ball joint it's on about a 35 degree angle again tilting out away from you so when you put it on the other side if you can see it over across the street but you can't see nothing down beside you so basically what I had to do was dismount the bottom section and take the stops and grind them off so that the mirror would turn in and then I took this area up in here and ground it flat. And I'll go to the other side and show why that was needed. Okay, this is my left mirror mounted on the right side of the car. As you can see right here, I took that 35 bevel and ground it down flat after I took the mirror head off. Uh, one thing, my car is an Eldorado, so the chrome strip right up in here is narrow. On the DeVille, I've noticed they go down and back further that way. So I don't know if you can mount this on top of that piece of chrome or if you'll have to notch it for it. Hopefully, you can mount it on top. But one thing I did on this side, I've moved it back an inch and a half in this area to, so that it would clear the window post when I was sitting in the driver's seat. That is not noticeable from one side to the other. But this mirror is an inch and a half further to the back than the left side mirror. This piece here is the ball that the mirror pivots on. Here's the ball, and right here it's got serrations on it where it's pressed down into the stem of the mirror itself, where I ground the 35 degrees down the flat. All right. All I did was take a screwdriver and not get on my uh, chrome, but slowly tap this off and drive it out. Again, it's just pressed in and doesn't take a uh, whole lot of effort to pry it up out of there. All right, some of y'all might try to uh, decide to use the stock mirror as it was. I wanted more pivot in the ball and my ball was loose and so the, mir the mirror just kind of bounced around. Also, uh, your newer vehicles have a con uh, vex mirror on the right side that gives you a wider angle. So I wanted to place, replace the glass with convex glass so I'd have a wide angle. To disassemble the mirror, the mirror itself is pressed in and then the outer edge is kind of crimped around it. That's the only thing that holds this glass in the housing is this outer edge where it's rolled over. I took a straight edge razor blade like this and stuck it right down by the edge and kept going around it and bending out, bending out, went around it, round it, just kept a little at a time. May have made ten passes of melt more. Finally, the mirror came out. It's not glued in. On the back side of it, it has what looks like tar paper glued to the back, but it does not glue to anything inside. Once you get into there, you have this piece here that's pop rivet onto a plate. 
this here is what holds the ball and it pivots in it. Well, once it gets loose, which mine was, there's no way to tighten it up uh, without stripping the mirror apart, so that's why I ended up stripping the mirror apart. It's pop riveted, not pop riveted, it's pop welded to a metal plate on the inside. And again, this is just for show. Uh, the ball goes through that plate. And of course, this would have went on top of it with the ball sandwiched in between. Then the ball comes down and pokes, this hole is oversized, but it sticks through the back side of the mirror. And again, it's just pressed right down onto the serrations into the mirror itself. What I did, I went out and got a regular trucking uh, five inch spot mirror. Now you can get these centered or off centered and if you do you'll be able to mount this straight to your mirror stem with no more modifications. If you want to keep the original factory back chrome piece then you have to go in and modify this. Take what all you're after is this ball joint in the glass. The housing itself you'll throw away. Here are the pieces that make up the ball joint. You got a plate here, the ball joint that's threaded, another cap over it, and then it pokes through and bolts to the back of the mirror. Well, when you go to put it on the factory housing, you run into a problem. And that's the stack up is too thick. Right here. And because of that, you can't get the glass down on it. What I did, I did away with the washer there, the first washer, and let the ball run right against the metal like the factory one did. That, that got me down some. Then I took and ground my ball down as much as I could, but not go through the hole to get the ball smaller. The screws that go in here to hold this on, when you put through, it will be too long. So after you get them screwed down, I took and ground the top of this off some more. And then I, after the screws were mounted, I took a grinder and ground the heads off till they were flush. Again, the object is to get this down in there just as deep as you can. Okay, so that you can mount your mirror to the stem itself that you press the uh, ball out of and ground flat, take and get you a, a quarter inch, 20 thread per inch tap and tap right where the serrations are. You don't need to over drill it or anything, but quarter inch standard would be your right tap to use. Then get your uh, three quarter inch standard bolt, cut the head off. Make sure when you buy your spot mirror, it's quarter inch threads. Some of your bigger ones are five sixteenths. Take and thread half of the bolt into the ball joint, thread the other half into the mirror itself. And that has mounted the spot mirror onto the stem itself. I did put a little Loctite on it as I didn't want to put pliers on it and scratch it all up. So I, I did put some sealer to keep it in place. Okay, to come up with a convex mirror for the right side, I went up to uh, Auto Parts Place and they have replacement mirrors for all different type of cars. Make sure it's a convex one. Uh, and usually they'll have written on it items uh, further back than it appear or whatnot to distinguish the difference of them. But I took the, the stock mirror, which is right here, that has the tar paper on the back, and I took the replacement mirror, laid it on it, and took a magic marker and drew the size. Then I covered the shiny part of the mirror, the face of it, with masking tape. And then went over to a belt sander 
and just real lightly kept going in a circle so I ground it down till it matched my circle that I had drawn so it would fit down into the original stock uh, mirror housing. I had one cut by a glass shop and uh, to be honest with you I was more happy with the one that I did on the belt sander than the one they did. In reassembling the mirror as you can see I have my ball joint and would be that plate would have screws in it and I got them down in there deep enough that my mirror glass itself doesn't touch. The uh, piece that the ball joint was spot welded to needs to be put back in to work as a shim so that the mirror don't go too deep. Which to do that you're going to have to cut this out big enough so that this piece you put in with the screws in it will go over top of it. And you can lay that back in there. It just sets in there. It's not glued anything. I did put just a little bit of silicone to hold it in place. Then I took my mirror that I ground to the size I wanted and siliconed it on top of the plate. I did not bend the flange back where the mirror was uh, pressed in. Uh, I had ground it to a tight enough fit that there was no gap and the silicone will hold it in now in, instead of the uh, being crimped. Okay, when I went to mount the mirror on the door itself, I took a piece of uh, masking tape and I laid the gasket over top of it and drew the pattern of the holes that needed to be put in the door. Mind you, I did move from here back an inch and a half. I drilled this one with a drill bit, a little bit smaller than needed, and then took a file and filed it out to the size I need. These two here, the two outer ones, are square. I took a 1 8 drill bit and drilled a hole in each corner of them, and then I took a Dremel and with a grinding stone on it, small grinding stone, and I ground them down till I could knock them out. Then I took a file and dressed them up till they made pretty square holes out of them and neat. And then I took touch-up paint and put it on the area where I had been filing so it wouldn't rust underneath. Again, here it is complete on the car. The only problems you have, the mirror will spin all the way around if somebody messes with you. It's a little loose in the pivot. As far as shutting the door, wind will not move it. But when you're washing the car, usually I hold the mirror steady so I don't knock it out of adjustment. Uh, I've made a couple of trips, seven, eight hundred miles up into the city of Philadelphia where it's nothing but traffic. And I really made driving this car in traffic way more enjoyable. I, I remember back in 65 driving one of these. I was 17 years old. But back in, I could throw my hand up on the seat and look out the back window and back up as fast as I go for it. Now at 65 and plates in my neck, I have to have a mural on that side or hope nobody's over there when I start going to the right. From what I understand, some countries even require mirrors on both sides. I know here in Virginia that if you don't have an interior mirror that you can see out the back window, you're required to have mirrors on both sides. So every state, every country will be different there. If it's anything I can do to help anybody to clarify what I've done, just give me an email and I'll respond as soon as possible. Here's my finished product. Uh, moving ahead a little bit for a minute. Uh, one thing I did do, I moved it back an inch and a half further on the right side than the left side so that the mirror wouldn't fall in line with the door post from the driver's seat. The next thing was when I replaced the ball socket, I squared up right here where the uh, ball socket was mounted so that the mirror would be more straight in line again rather than kicking out to the left and you'd have had to kick the arm way out. Uh, one thing in doing this, this mirror now will spin around 360 degrees. 
uh, no, no problem. Never have had it to move going down the road, shutting the door. But yes, if you hit it or washing the car and all, you'll knock the mirror out of adjustment. And it would spin around if you tried to. After a couple of tries on eBay, I finally picked up a mirror for what I figured was a reasonable price for one that I'm going to take apart and might end up throwing in the trash can. Uh, it was in overall good condition and was pleased on that end. Uh, first thing I did was I cut the shaft off. Uh, you cannot run it through the door panel or come out at the wrong angle and even the echelon that goes on the left side won't work on the right side. It's at a wrong angle completely. To get the mirror apart from the ball socket it's a washer here with little teeth all the way around it. It's spring loaded to keep it uh, tight. Push down on the spring or the washer and take a small screwdriver and one at a time pry each one of those teeth loose from under the lock. You might have to go around the mirror two or three times to get them all loose. When that happens this top washer with the teeth will come up off then the spring then it's another flat washer down underneath. Once you have those three pieces off, the base and the stem itself will separate. And when you separate them, you look down in there, you will see some cast in little tips that you'll need to grind off so that the mirror will turn all the way around rather than just from side to side hit the stops. After I got the base itself back together, the next thing I did was remove the mirror head. Removing the mirror head, this right here is the ball socket the, ball, the mirror pivots on. And where it mounts to the mirror stem, it's just drove in with serrations. If you go on the back side and tap it real light with a small screwdriver, work yourself around, you can knock it out of the stem, which will leave the stem open, and you can grind that taper down flat so the mirror won't be kicked around so far when you cross over to the other side of the car. <clears throat> Not knowing that I was going to be wanting to show somebody else how to do it, I didn't take pictures as I was going along, so I'm using another mirror to give examples of what I worked with as, again, I didn't take pictures of mine when I had it apart. First thing to do is remove the glass from the mirror, the chrome piece itself. The mirror is not glued in. The edge of it, right around here, is just crimped over to hold the mirror tight. I took a single edge razor blade and stuck it between the glass and the metal and kept bending it out till the mirror itself, the glass, would snap up out of there. Now this is the original mirror glass that I took out and as you see I didn't break it taking it out. It's not glued in but on the back side glued to it looks like the old tar paper which kind of keeps it tight and keeps it from rattling. After you take the glass off you'll find this metal strap rivet spot welded to another plate and because I've had to take that off and under that is the ball that it pivots on. And then it's another piece of metal. Now, this isn't metal, of course, but the ball sticks through it like that, goes through the back of the mirror like that, and then drove into the, uh, the stem. I used my original mirror base. But what I went out and did, I bought a typical uh, tractor trailer five inch spot mirror and used it to replace the ball as I couldn't change the ball over. Also when you pick up a mirror make sure that the stem where it mounts is quarter inch uh, standard th uh, threads as you'll have to tap it to the stem to screw the two together. At this point if you don't want to go through the trouble of modifying the mirror head itself, uh, all you have to do is make sure you buy a mirror that has threads quarter inch standard. 
then take a tap and tap the stem of your mirror arm itself the quarter inch standard. Don't go very deep as you'll go all the way through and break out the other end. Then get a three quarter inch standard bolt, take a hacksaw and cut the head off, screw half of it into the mirror head and half of it into the stem. Now you can find these mirror heads where the ball socket is over to one side which will look a little more neater than this one here with it being mounted center. But I went ahead and used my original housing. To do so, I took a, the mirror, disassembled it, and used the ball socket to come out of the other mirror. The one problem I ran into, right in here, the gap was too big and would not go down into the mirror deep enough to put the glass back in. So a couple of things I did to get clearance out. This one here had two washes on it. I did away with one and let the ball ride on the mirror itself. And then on the other one, I kept grinding the ball down smaller and shorter so that uh, it was wouldn't fall through, but at the same time take the gap out. That eventually got me deep enough that I could put take the stock mirror and then I took the metal plate and using it for a spacer to determine how far out the mirror itself is I was able to take and put the plate back cut around the new ball socket I put in so it would clear and that would let it go all the way down then I took some silicone and glued the plate and new ball socket down I did even grind the back of the screws off so they wouldn't protrude up. Then I took again silicone and glued my mirror into the light, the shell itself, uh, and I didn't crimp the edge back over. My glass was tight enough, and with the silicone, it held it tight enough that it was never going to come out. Another thing I found a little bit different, since mine's an Eldorado, the chrome piece along the top of the door is small all the way back to the top where it folds into the trunk. On a DeVille this piece of chrome comes around down to the bottom and then goes back. It's cut out for the mirror. On the passenger side that piece of chrome goes all the way up to the very front. I don't know if you'll have to cut that piece of chrome around or if you can mount the mirror right on top of it. Uh, set the gasket on the door and, and if it will cover over it I'd drill through both pieces of metal rather than take that panel off. I'm sure it probably had a repaint or two and they didn't take that piece of chrome off so when you cut it back you can see what's underneath of it. I think you could take a Dremel and cut the chrome with no trouble. Uh, again it's just stainless steel it's not really chrome but uh, if the mirror will fit on top of it I think I'd, I'd just leave it alone and drill through both pieces.